okay. I was trying to think of the simplest analogy to explain some of the stuff that is insanely complex. And it's in uh, the works of Roger Boscovich's Theory of Natural Philosophy. Uh, one picture where Nikola Tesla is sitting there touching his head with one hand, his left hand. And he had his right hand on a book that was Roger Boscovich's Theory of Natural Philosophy. Now you can download that book for free off of archive.org. Half the book's in Latin, the other half is English. I've warned people that have <laughs> tried to read that book that it will melt your brain. And even trying to summarize one page of it is absolutely impossible. But to sum it down, you know, part of it anyway, into something super simplex that modern minds are simple now since we're all like brain dead uh, self droolers that are addicted to the television set. It would be uh, um, the metaphysics of vectors. Now, time and space are not things in and of themselves. These are measures and magnitudes. So how do you actually apply some of the really, really complex stuff of Roger Boscovich, who is the fan of Nikola Tesla, to a simplex thought experiment? And this is something that scientists do quite often, at least the really good ones, and there's not many good ones anymore, are thought experiments is that if we expend the exact same amount of energy to a single vehicle, how could there be a huge discrepancy between time and space covered between the same vehicle? So let's imagine a clock, okay? Let's just have imagine the second hand of a clock. And the second hand is a thousand miles long, okay? It has a central nexus point, right? A linchpin. Now, up to, I don't know, a few hundred yards or whatever, even more than that, a child could grab hold of that arm and sit on it and have a light breeze blow in his face, right? So from the center point here, say this hand's a thousand miles long, you know, a few hundred yards, get a light breeze, this is actually traversing a circumference, right? Now the same energy is expended at a thousand yards from the center pin or the nexus as it is all the way to the end, right? The arm is one single piece, a thousand miles long. And now somehow we were to instantly teleport someone to the end of that hand because it would be impossible to grab it. It would be traveling at the thousand end mark of the end of that hand. It would be traveling so incredibly fast First, you'd have to be in a bubble because the, the air alone, the friction of the air would actually, if you could withstand it, which you couldn't, would be so high as it would melt your skin. It would cause you to catch on fire, like a meteorite re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. That would be point number one. Point number two, the speed would be so incredible. Phase shift. What do we think we understand about vectors? Using this sort of retroductive, and this is a thought experiment. Now, now think of about a, a second hand on a clock. It's a thousand miles long. Sitting on the hand close to the center point versus all the way at the end. Now, there's only one expenditure of energy to drive that hand, correct? Okay. So where is the huge discrepancy between time and space covered? and the energy required to tra traverse a much larger circumference. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, and you'll have to think about this further, since this is a really simplex thought experiment, is that since it takes 60 seconds to go from here to here, and from here at, this, at the closest to the center pin, 60 seconds to go from the same distance, but is it the same distance? Is this distance, that would be a different radius, right? This radius is uh, 500 miles, the uh, diameter being 1,000, correct? So, the distance covered would be the same, right? Because this is the same distance as this, correct? No? Different radius? Different, uh, different uh, diameter? Different circumference between this and this, right? But this is the same distance covered. Isn't this the same distance as this? That would be a spatial parameter but we have a different vector from a core nexus point. So we have a different space, but the exact same speed 
between this radius and this radius, correct? Exact same speed covers a much larger space. So what? how do you reconcile time and space? People think they understand Zeno's paradox, but they don't actually understand the core fundamentals of Zeno's paradox. If you don't know what Zeno's paradox is, then if you went to college, you should probably get a refund on your education. That is the most simple thought experiment that I can think of. I've got a lot more complex ones, but I don't think people would understand. They start scratching their heads. Is that simple thought experiment too much? Can you reconcile it? I bet you can't. Now you know why Roger Vascovich was such a point of great study and interest for Nikola Tesla. But if you try to read Roger Vascovich's work, if you could read the Latin, I said half of it's Latin, half of it's in English. The, you know, the free publication on archive.org. It'll melt your brain. The Latin or the English will melt your brain. You'll never understand it. You might understand a little bit here and there, but you could give the best scientists on Earth that book and, you know, their eyeballs were cross. What about that thought experiment? Can you decipher it? Because this proves that time and space are not things. They're not. They're measures. But these measures are vector dependent. And vectors depend on fill in the blank. What do vectors depend upon? I think a lot of people are going to scratch their heads about this. The other half won't give a damn. <laughs> it's still interesting. I bet nobody will figure it out, but...